I love when they're betting on the partner's lifespan too. And they're asking him if he even wants to get in on the bet of how long oh, he yeah, will survive. Yeah. And oh god, the the dialogue is so good in this movie. And you know, anything related to the weapons, I think was definitely I agree with you, Ian, it's definitely Milius, especially in the target practice sequence. You know, and the whole ballistics thing and big Briggs uh you know, asking for the bullet or yeah, the whole mystery around the bullet. And this is evidence, right? This is what he believes to be evidence, but he hasn't entered it as evidence, so he can kind of keep possession of it, I guess, for the time being. But so good, man. Those guys are so good. And Tim uh Tim uh, Matheson also. Yeah. The four guys. Like we were saying off air when we were waiting for you, Ian, like I'm surprised no one's tried to remake this. And e and I'm sure Eastwood's the reason why, but from like the assassin's angle. Sure. You know, because aren't you kind of curious, like what happens at the academy? Is it like Hal Holbrook who shows up at like an academy dinner and like, like, like spouts his sort of like philosophies on how to handle crime and then kind of meets with them socially for you know, like Taps with George C. Scott, you know, when he gets all his officers around. You know, remember that movie Taps before they yeah. seize the military yeah. academy? George C. Scott kind of implies this like conversation and a conversation about duty and stuff that you should cross the line when you see fit based on, you know, your training and whatnot. So like, is there like a meeting with Hal Holbrook at some police academy? Like, I got a job for the four of you. Do you think that I'd already seen it, so I already knew the twist. I'm trying to remember back when I first watched it, if I knew those four young guys were dirty off the top. I felt like you were, you were definitely suspecting them because they were profiled so hard in the front. Um, I remember watch. I remember my. I remember. My, I remember watching it and thinking that they probably had something to do with it. But the the part that draws that that tricked me when I initially first watched it was when Sweet gets killed. He gets shotgunned down at the door. Car coming, Frank. There's a big guy out there. Got a uniform on? No. He ain't no cop. Cops always come in the front door. Another car. Why do they come in squad cars if they're cops? That big guy's working himself around by these containers. He's got a gun out. Two uniforms in it. That ain't no cop's gun, Frank. There's a cop in uniform coming up to the door. He ain't open. Come back tomorrow. Police officers, we'd like to ask you some questions. I'm just a watchman. Nobody's here. We're looking for Mr. Frank Palancio. Would you open the door, sir? We have a warrant for his arrest. I said nobody's here, God damn it! We have warrants for a search of the premises. Serve him!
what a great idea to throw you off the scent of like, oh yeah, of course it's them, you know? And then he gets yeah. shotgun down and you're like, oh, maybe, it could, why would they kill one of their own? It couldn't be him. Couldn't be and I, Well, and also they're, they're really trying hard to frame it up that it's only Charlie. Sure. Yeah. Running around the range. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, I like watching it again this time. I'm like, oh, okay. He's definitely doing like the, the pool shooting. He assassinates uh, Rick. Uh, like, I thought that was him 100%. Seems hmm. like he'd be the main recruit. I mean, the way that Briggs is talking to everybody where he goes to Callahan and he's like, you know, we tried to recruit you, bring you in on this, but obviously, you know, you're going to be an extinct, you're extinct now or whatever, you know, we're going to kill you now. Yeah. Um, it the Charlie was, seems like since he's such a loose cannon that he would have been the first person prospect, right? I mean, outside the rookies. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. It makes sense. And now maybe he did do the pool shooting at Suzanne Summer's house. I thought, and by, his, I thought his character introduction was uh, that was the only one him backing out of his car spot. Hot Nova, hot yellow but, yeah, it was just it was like he, he, no one back, <laughs> <laughs> and then he stopped. And, oh, hey, hey. Yeah, I mean, I love Mitchell Ryan in the movie overall, and I think like uh, even it's so funny to see a, a you know a young Robert Urich and. Then I started thinking about all the stuff Yurik did later, SWAT, Spencer for Hire, and now he's gone. Yeah. You know, and David Soul, we just lost him. No, oh, did too. He? But they were really well cast. Those guys were that's pre Hutch, right? Yeah. Magna yeah. Force is pre Hutch. Hello. My name is Rico Ross. I'm an actor who you may recognize from movies like um, James Cameron's Aliens, Brian De Palmer's uh, Mission Impossible. Or even a husband for Christmas with Jessica Fox. I'm here to talk about N M O S D. That's N M O S D. Now, M N O S D. It can paralyze you. It can blind you. It can even kill you in a matter of minutes. But we're this close, this close to finding a cure. And with that cure, here's a kicker. With that cure comes a cure for cancer. That's right, you heard me. A cure for cancer. The Guthrie, Guthrie Jackson Foundation is a charitable foundation. It's been around for about 15 years. And they bring together the best minds in medicine to find life-saving cures. So go to the Guthrie Jackson Foundation and donate today. As a matter of fact, do it now so you don't forget. That's what I'm doing. Take care of yourself and stay frosty.